Hello, Lakeview family. I hope you all are doing well and enjoying your week. Uh, I'm I'm recording this Wednesday evening uh, out of my ordinary time because uh, I just got back from our district pastors retreat and it was fantastic. I uh, always have a great time being with my colleagues and getting up uh, to Trinity Pines and spending some time together in prayer and learning together, um, sharing about what God is doing in our churches, praying for each other, uh, carrying each other's burdens, uh, and and just being uh, in fellowship with other uh, folks that are doing the same kinds of things in different parts uh, of our district. And it was fantastic. So it has been good, and I'm looking forward to this weekend. So we're continuing Revelation series. And as I mentioned, this Sunday, we'll be hearing from Reverend Dr. Ben Beckel. Uh, he's an Old Testament scholar, currently pastors in Grangeville, Idaho, uh, on the Northwest uh, District at Grangeville Church of the Nazarene. And um, he is a fantastic guy. So I've known him since he was in high school. I was a youth pastor in Washington, and he was on my district, and so I got to know him there. And when he came to NNU, he was uh, one of my interns at uh, at Nampa First. And so and I'll share maybe a little more of, of that story on Sunday when I introduce him. But he is a dear friend and someone who I look up to, admire for his uh, just his depth of, of insight on the scriptures, particularly the Old Testament. Um, and interesting you may be thinking why is an old testament guy talking about revelation well as we as we've talked about and as i mentioned last week uh, revelation has a ton of allusion to old testament imagery symbolism stories prophecies all of these things and there's a there's a lot of correlation and tie-in so having those eyes help us see the book of revelation i think will be really helpful additionally ben has wrote a book on Revelation that was spurred out of a Sunday school class at his church in Grangeville, as well as his own sermon series. And he really does a great job of, uh, of I think, bringing some of that depth and some of the things that we can wrestle with in Revelation in practical ways to the church. And he's going to do that on Sunday. And I'm super excited. Uh, and, and kind of the imagery and metaphor, I won't expose all of what he's going to talk about, but it's really talking about the church and making it very practical for what does it mean for us today as a church to live out this message that we read in Revelation? What is Revelation really calling us to do and to be? Um, and I'll give you a hint, and it has to do with, with a sign. It has to do with a sign. We, in a sense, become a sign uh, pointing people to Jesus. Language I love to use is being Jesus pointers. You've heard me say that. Uh, before. And so I'm excited for Ben to unpack. Um, we'll be in Revelation 11. I think it's verses 1 through 13. Uh, so we've we've skipped a chunk, uh, and so he'll kind of reference that a little bit. But there is some parts that we'll miss. We're only doing seven weeks in Revelation. You, you can't do it all. Um, but I think I think kind of how we are navigating it is, is a good path and, and helps us to grasp, uh, in large part, the, the totality of what Revelation is has for us, and, and at least in this run, gives us a good uh, good taste of Revelation and helps us navigate that, that text and apply it to our lives. Um, and I hope as that you are as I am. I'm still thinking about Sunday, this past Sunday. Uh, what a, an amazing service. Uh, I thought the Spirit was very present, and I was so grateful for the posture of worship that I felt and sensed and saw in all of us as we hopefully are getting the fact that, man, this this story, and not just Revelation, but the whole story of God is about the Savior of the world, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and who he is and what it means that Jesus has come for us and what it means that Jesus still reigns on the throne. And that should always draw us to radical worship of the King. And so I'm looking forward to being together again, where God will, again, draw us together. We will gather together to learn, to be edified, to pray for one another, to experience the word, to come under the word, to hear from God, to respond in worship, to respond by giving ourselves, to receive his grace through communion, and again, to respond back in thanksgiving, and then to be sent, right, to be the signs, to embody this message that we that we really take in when we participate in communion. So I'm excited for this rhythm that we have. 
Uh, and a couple things I wanted to just bring to your attention. Uh, next week's going to be a pretty full week. So we have our trunk or treat. Uh, we're still looking for people to sign up for trunks. Um, so do that. This is a great way uh, to be bears of the good news of the kingdom in our community to be Jesus pointers, you know, by having a trunk and being there as people walk through and participate. Um, so be, be looking at that. There's still, I think places you can sign up for a chili. Um, and if you have some candy that you would love to bring to donate, uh, you could do that as well. Bring it to the, the back of the sanctuary. That's where the signups will be. And you can leave the candy, uh, there as well. Um, Sunday night, for those of you who might be interested, after the after-school program that we host in Hampton Hall, Monday through Thursday, um, the founder of that and a lot of the folks that help out and support are believers, passionate believers of Jesus. And this whole movement started out of a, a vision from God to Murray Haberfield, who's the director of After. Uh, and so there is a very Christocentric point to After and, and wanting to in ways that are appropriate with an after-school program, expose people to hope in Christ. And so Sunday night for um, for staff and people who support, uh, staff of after and the people who are supporting after, and we are invited as well, there's a prayer and worship night. So it's not um, it's not involving students or their families. Uh, I mean, they may have been invited and they may come, but that's not the primary goal of it. It is really a time of prayer and worship for after and for the direction of after. So if that is something that is exciting to you or that you'd like to be part of that, it's Sunday night. And I believe it's 630 in Hampton Hall. I will uh, have the time absolutely correct on Sunday when I announce it and when it's in the bulletin. So, uh, But be thinking about that and put that on your radar. And also next weekend is our fourth annual Boldly United Youth Conference. So if you would be continuing to pray for that. Uh, and if you want to come and participate, helping set up or tear down, we'll be doing set up Friday afternoon. I'll have some more specific information on Sunday about that as well. Um, but do be praying about that. And if you want to stop in and, 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 and see, to participate, pray for, we will have prayer teams throughout the event, both on site and, and giving people prompts where they can pray from home. Um, but that's something that we are excited about for this, um, next next weekend, the first and second of November. Uh, God is doing some great things in this young generation, and this has been an opportunity to provide an avenue of unity for, for youth in the Treasure Valley. This year we have we have churches coming from uh, out of the Treasure Valley, so from Spokane, Twin Falls, uh, and so we're it's just kind of continuing to morph and grow, and, and God is using this in incredible ways, and, uh, and it's not without its challenges. Um, but man, we just know that God is going to honor and bless these efforts. And I'm excited to be a part of a church that's willing to stretch ourselves and, and try different things uh, to help people encounter Jesus in real ways that transform lives. So look forward to seeing you Sunday and uh, have a great rest of your week. Blessings, church.